the Hulk jump into space? Ah, the Incredible Hulk is a hero defined by his incredible feats of strength. Bruce Banner's Gamma Ray Altered Ego has done everything from rip Wolverine in half to stop an earthquake with his bare hands. But that kind of strength is so terrestrial. Is the Hulk strong enough to do something truly otherworldly? Is he strong enough to jump into space? If you only know the Hulk from the MCU, you might think that the extent of his powers are smashing and jumping, but his feats in the comics over the decades are downright ridiculous. This dude routinely causes earthquakes and almost sunk Manhattan with a single step. He punched time once. He punched time. And important for our purposes, the Hulk has even jumped into the upper atmosphere, but didn't make it much further than that. Is there a way, using science, to take all this strength and see just how far Banner could bound? I think so, but first, what speed Hulk need- No! Don't mess up! Say words correctly! Sorry. First, what speed does the Hulk need in order to get into space? Well, this is just another way of asking what the escape velocity of Earth is. And I know you've all heard of this term before, but I want to go step by step with you and discover it mathematically so that we all really understand it. And we're gonna do this without all of Bruce Banner's seven PhDs. Uh, I'm a doctor. As we went through in our Death Star recoil episode, it takes some amount of big work energy to move an object away from a source of gravity. And that amount of energy is gonna be equal to the force of gravitation multiplied by the distance you wanna move that thing away, which gives us this expression. This equation describes a tangible amount of work that you have to do, except there's a negative sign in there. That can be confusing, but it makes sense. The only way to make the gravitational potential energy equal to zero such that you do not fall back into a source of gravity, you go beyond this imaginary line here, is to set the distance you are away equal to literal infinity. And so this equation actually says that any object that wants to escape another's gravity has to have some positive amount of energy. All of this math is where the metaphorical gravity well concept comes from that you've heard scientists and sci-fi authors talk about forever. Now the size of this metaphorical well is gonna depend on the size of the object that is creating it and the mass of that object, but what is important is that if you do not have enough positive energy to escape the well, you will inevitably tumble back down. The exact amount of energy that the Hulk would need to jump out of this gravity well and stand up on the lip, the amount of energy he would need to bring himself out an infinite distance away from some planet or another object with mass is going to be the energy required to make this equation equal to zero. If the positive energy that we are going to add is kinetic because the Hulk is jumping and moving, then all we have to do is set these two expressions equal to each other. If we do that and then solve for velocity, we just discovered the equation for escape velocity all by ourselves. And so if the Hulk jumped with escape velocity away from some object, then theoretically his kinetic energy alone would bring him out to an infinite distance away from that object with his kinetic energy and his gravitational potential energy always approaching zero, but never quite getting there. He would never fall back to that object. All of his energy, all of his velocity would just keep getting real low. It's getting real low, big guy. It's good. Oh, didn't think of, didn't need to see that. The escape velocity for Earth is a blistering 11.2 kilometers per second. But is the Hulk strong enough to generate this kind of speed? It is really hard to say with any sort of precision exactly how strong any comic book character is, especially one like the Hulk that has been around for decades. In one comic, dude even said his strength was incalculable, and that dude was a genius. So it's all gonna come down to the estimations that we use in the examples. So, let's try one. If you multiply the ultimate tensile strength of some material by the cross-sectional area of the object that material is making, then you get the force you need to rip that thing apart. 
Let's say that we give, uh, I don't know, Wolverine's spine a few square centimeters in cross-sectional area and give the ultimate tensile strength of adamantium the tensile strength of graphene because it's the material we know of with the most. If we do that, then the forces that the Hulk may have generated when he ripped Wolverine in half could be equivalent to 25 times the force in thrust that the space shuttle put out upon liftoff. I mean, that's one number that we could use, but what number would you put to punching time? You see, that's the Hulk's secret. His powers are always confusing. I mean, where'd he even get that gains? Thankfully, there's a more straightforward approach. We know what the Hulk's legs can do. If dude can sink the eastern seaboard of the United States with a single step, potentially, then we are talking about him creating seriously large earthquakes. And earthquakes have energies that we can estimate. The most widely used scale for measuring the power of large earthquakes is not the Richter scale. It is the magnitude moment scale developed by smart boys and geophysicists Hiro Kanamore and Tom Hanks. No, not that Tom Hanks, but I could not find a picture of the scientist. Now, Hanks and Kanamore related the energy that an earthquake could put out to the mechanical work that the earthquake does when it moves some section of rock some large distance. To capture the full range of energies that large earthquakes could put out, Hanks and Kanamori related the energies logarithmically so that one full magnitude increase would equate to about 32 times the increase in energy. So go from a five to a six, and it's an increase in energy of 32 times, up to 15 million kilograms of TNT. But go from five to eight, and it's an increase of 32,000, up to 15 billion kilograms of TNT equivalent. Since the magnitude moment scale describes big work energy, what if we just assume that the Hulk can generate the equivalent amount of work in his legs that a large earthquake can do to rock? And we assume that instead of all going into a stop, it all goes into a jump. I know it's comic book logic, but my man Brew Band punched time. Since work and kinetic energy are related, let's go through more or less the same process we did to find escape velocity, except this time we're gonna find final velocity after the Hulk puts all of that earthquake energy into his legs. If we further assume that the Hulk is a thousand kilograms and he puts a magnitude eight earthquakes worth of energy into his legs, then we find a velocity of 11.2. Nope, that's not big enough, it needs to be Bigger it, that's better. 11,200 kilometers per second. 5% the speed of light, a thousand times the escape velocity for Earth. But would it really be enough? Every time we've mentioned escape velocity so far, we've omitted something very, very important. <laughs> no, not you, duh, nobody wants you around. No, the atmosphere. The basic equation for escape velocity that we found always considers an object in a vacuum. It never includes an atmosphere around an object. And so even if something has escape velocity, it might not escape. For example, if you threw a baseball straight up at the speed of light, it would immediately experience incredible drag forces because the force of drag squares with velocity. All of the air molecules in the baseball's way, even going that fast, would put so much force and so much heat on it that something really bad would happen. Because of these forces and the heat involved, throw a baseball at the speed of light and it would immediately destroy itself and everything around it in a nuclear-like explosion. Of course, objects do pass through our atmosphere at faster than escape velocities. Meteors do this, but only the biggest meteors do. And by the time they make it to the Earth's surface, they have been robbed by our atmosphere of most of their mass and cosmic velocity. So, how can we determine if the Hulk could make it into space even if he had escape velocity? Well, maybe the most controversial underground nuclear tests in U.S. history can help. On August 27th, 1957, the U.S. government, as a part of Operation Plumbob, put a 300-ton yield nuclear weapon at the bottom of an 150-meter shaft. They sealed the bomb in with a concrete plug, and they sealed the shaft with a steel cap weighing many hundreds of kilograms. When they detonated the bomb, 
it instantaneously turned the concrete plug into superheated gas that turned the entire shaft into a 500 foot long nuclear powered gun pointed at space. When the concrete gas met the steel cap, scientist Bob Brownlee, who helped develop the experiment, estimated that the steel cap was accelerated to 66 kilometers per second, six times escape velocity. Now, under this nuclear force and fire, the steel cap was probably vaporized, but Brownlee and numerous articles you can find have their doubts as to what really happened. In theory, this steel cap could have made it into space despite the Earth's atmosphere in the way. And it just so happens that this value around 60 kilometers per second is the fastest, I mean slowest, that the Hulk could go in our calculations. Just say words like right, my pants ripped off. Unlike meteors and unlike the steel cap in Operation Plumb Bob, we can consider the Incredible Hulk to be indestructible. I mean, in one comic, he already survived a fall from space like a meteor. So, if we give him the incredible velocity that we calculated, a velocity many, many times greater than what could have propelled a similarly weighted steel cap into space if it were indestructible, and I think that absolutely the Hulk could jump into space. But that's the boring part. The moment that the Hulk started his jump, the material directly underneath his giant feet would be compressed like it was inside the core of a star. And when the Hulk lifted off from the ground, in that instant, the pressure would be released, and so it would create a nuclear-like explosion. Now, if you could see the Hulk lift off from this explosion, your eyes weren't turned into dust, it would look like a shooting star in reverse. A brilliant, burning banner glowing from heat with a beam of plasma shooting up into the sky. In under a second, Banner would leave the Earth. In under a minute, he would pass the moon. There's a scenario here, given all of our assumptions and estimations and calculations, where not only does the Hulk jump hard enough to leave the Earth behind and the Moon, he jumps hard enough to leave the solar system behind and maybe even the entire Milky Way. Just a big green guy floating forever through space, naked because his pants burned off. Beautiful. So, is the Hulk strong enough to jump into space? Well, given all the other amazing feats of strength that he has accomplished, I'd say yes, it is very possible that Banner could bound beyond the pull of Earth's gravity. Of course, once he got into space, he wouldn't be able to breathe, and he would asphyxiate, and he wouldn't be able to change his direction, and he would just be a big green meat popsicle floating out in space, and if you were anywhere near him when he jumped, you would be vaporized by nuclear fire. But hey, he says this all the time. Hulk smash, because science. Obviously, there's a lot of wiggle room with numbers for the Hulk because he's done so many crazy things in terms of strength. There's one panel where someone says that he caused a 123 Richter scale in magnitude earthquake. That would be, because of the logarithmic energy increase that we talked about in the episode. That would be 10 million trillion times the mass energy of the entire universe times a Google. So I think he could make it into space if he could hit something so hard that it would have more energy than the entire universe, which is dumb, but awesome. Thank you so much for watching today's episode and a big thanks over to the nerds at Tough SF, the blog and the Discord, especially Matterbeam and Kerr for their help on this episode. As you can see, it was pretty complicated. If you want more of me, you can go back to Nerdist.com or you can go to Alpha at ProjectAlpha.com or if you sign up now for a free trial, you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else and you can get other premium content from this channel, Nerdist and Geek and Sundry like Natural Selection, which is a debate show that I do with my good friend and colleague Dan Casey, which is a lot of fun. We argue things like Ant-Man versus Wasps. It's ridiculous. If you want more of Because Science, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, subscribe, and follow us on social media here.